Susie, and I live among them. <laughs> and I've been here for about, what, 16 months? I'm Randy, I'm a Curtis Martin from over here, and uh, I'm supported by my daughter and her uh, husband and uh, neighbor. So I'm here for that. Ken, University of the Pacific. I'm Mike, from the University of the Pacific. I'm Erica. I lived here for a little over a year and we're at 34th and Broadway and also <coughs> Hi everyone, I'm Petra. I've lived here my whole life. I'm 22 years old. I live right next to South High, so it's like in the corner of the park, I'd say. My name is Angela. I'm um, a member of this community since about 2000, and I also work um, in the area as well. I'm Sawan. I've been a member of this community since 1985. Um, my mother had me at UC Davis, and I am the executive director of Community Against Sexual Harm um, right on Broadway in Alhambra. Hi, everyone. My name is Liz, and I'm a long-time resident of Oak Park. Um, my Sacramento. Um, I've been in Sacramento. I'm sorry, guys, but I'm from Stockton. 
But I, I lived in Sacramento um, since I was a teenager. I have lots of friends and family in the Oak Park area, so I'm loving to be a part of this going on and um, I was a Hi everyone, uh, Isabel Bell Cruz. I've been here only five years. It'll be five years on July 4th. And I live off of 42nd and 7th. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Kim Carter Martinez. I live on 33rd and 3rd. And I walk my dog at McGeorge like every day. Um, I'm also, oh, I've been here since July. And I'm also the District 5 uh, Commissioner, so nice to see you. Hi, I'm Sue I work at UC Davis at the Square, and I'm eight months into my job. Hi, I'm Ken. I used to live next to a Chrysler Street from Rev, and now I'm on 10th Avenue. I've been in a park for almost 10 years now. I'm Rev Levig. Uh, our family has been in Oak Park for about 35 years. I've lived in Oak Park for about the last 20. Uh, I was one of the board members with him <laughs> of Oak Park, o o -P -N -A. And uh, we are the old cross party in the church and organization in the country. Hello, my name is Mary Conner. I'm from the River Oaks Center for Children. And I brought some flyers. Please take one. If you choose to. There is one flyer that has information about the survey that's going on in the police department. If you don't have that link, I did attach to my flyer. So if you're interested in um, doing that survey, please pick up the flyer. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tom Sumster. I moved in Oak Park in 1989. And I live at 33rd and Diagon Alley right across from the new project. So I'm also interested in parking issues. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Marble, and I live uh, close to Allen Road <coughs> and Broadway. And uh, I've been living here for five years this area. Hi, my name is Yolanda Ashford, and I've lived in Oak Park. I guess over 10 years, and I live at uh, 32nd Street off of 12th, next to a couple of houses down from New York Church. Hi, right. everyone. I'm Julia. I work at UC Davis Institute of the Environment. And we are sponsoring and coordinating a series of murals throughout California that have an environmental theme. So we um, got a sponsorship from SMUD, and we are looking for the right building. Sacramento. Um, so I'm here to kind of solicit ideas. Unfortunately, I have to leave pretty quickly um, for a birthday party in Winters. Uh, but if we can figure out a way to, you know, maybe you could get my information from Adrian um, or Nico. Maybe you could talk to Nico and you can, um, connect with me. Um, or to Nico, sorry. So, um, if you're a business owner, if you know somebody who's a business owner who might have a wall that they would like to share, the artists that we're working with are Shona McDaniels, um, Henry Fiss, and Alpha Green. Awesome. Yeah, it's a great opportunity. And it, it's a, so artists have already been identified. You just need a site or a, a, a host of a property owner willing to, right. to have a mural place there. We just need to decide the artists are going to hold two workshops to solicit ideas for the mural from the community in which the mural will be. So they're going to be coordinating all of that. UC Davis is doing all the um, logistical stuff related to the site and um, payment and whatnot. Awesome. If you have ideas, can I, I guess, with myself or Sumiko or Julia or she is. <laughs> So we had a couple late arrivals, yeah. Um, so over here and then the Cassandra. Oh, we just couldn't hear that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was really hoping to avoid this part. <laughs>
right to especially today. Have this song and Jenny and we say hope. Thank you. We have our council member with us. Hi, Kate Maple, a former OTNA board member and District 5 City Council member. And uh, I'm Michael Benjamin. I have the distinct uh, man. I was born and raised in this community, so um, I'm now the uh, appointed district director for District 5 and Katie Mayer. Oh, no. And we are. And I'm OPNA member. And I'm OPNA member. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So he's technically, although on the board he's Michael number two, this is Michael number one. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Everybody, Michael Blair, I'm an OPNA board member as well, and I live in the south part of the neighborhood, been here about a good 20, 22 years, something like that. So. Glad you guys made it out. Thank you. So before we, we turn it over to the University of the Pacific uh, partners, just want to acknowledge the food. So this food has just been provided by Mo Betta Finger Foods. Stick around. <laughs> and you, you may have been able to find them on 14th and Stockton. Um, been there for several years. I know Katie, I know you've been working with them recently around some issues they've been having, but I just want to acknowledge like they're awesome, they're providing food for us, but they're also undergoing some, some issues. I don't know if you want to quickly go over that. Sure, yeah. So, um, and technically it's in District 6, but we, we're partners, we all work together. Um, but yeah, but unfortunately, the building that it's in has a lot of electrical issues. The building owner um, we're working with, hopefully to get some of those issues resolved, but in the meantime, she may be um, looking for a new place to go, um, depending on how expensive the work is. And then also we're trying to work with SMUD to see if we can get her some funding to replace the equipment. She lost because she did have a certain electrical surge that happened during this time. So we're working on it, it might take some time. Uh, but if you can support her in any way, um, we'll be trying through her office, but just you know, help get some food for a small business because it would be a shame to lose that in the So, uh, and I know there's folks still uh, filling in, but why don't we turn it over to you all and we can help pass out some of these guys um, to get us going. All right? Maybe we'll just do like a big off or not. So we can take it off. Yeah, so um, I was going to stand up there, but I think given the layout of the room, I'm going to stand here and kind of roam around a little bit. My name is Ken Mullen, I'm the Chief Operating Officer of the University of the Pacific. I'm with the University about uh, around 12 years. I uh, work in Stockton, and then for my main offices, I'm here a bit, and I'm going to go as well with the campus there. Uh, so, um, uh, it's good to be here. I've never been in the center here. This is awesome. Uh, it's like a campus. I mean, there's a lot of buildings. I just kind of drove in and go, all right, which building am I going to? It's my first time here. Uh, Great vibe here. I love it. Super Saturdays. I saw that. I, I used to work with youth uh, a lot, and uh, we had Super Saturdays at, where I worked uh, with them. And it brings back great memories. Also, I noticed here some free stuff. I uh, love that. Free resources, free computer, internet. Uh, I, I noticed United Way is involved. I'm on the board of United Way in San Joaquin County. Uh, so I work with United Way closely, as I did in North Carolina, where I lived for 20 years, and we raised our family basically there. But um, let's go down. Um, what I'd like to do is, you have the slides here. Keep this informal, just so you know. Can't see them, but I have two hearing aids in. Uh, and so the acoustics in here are a little hard for me. Um, I'm a kid from the 70s, so too much of the Who, Kiss, and ACBC, uh, and now I'm getting books. Um, and, and, uh, but uh, anyway, um, if you can speak up, we'll keep it informal, interrupt me. Um, as you have questions, uh, I'm going to try to cover everything I think is of interest to you on the project and probably more, but um, if I miss something, don't hesitate to ask me as I'm, I'm sure you will. So, uh, great to be here, but I'm uh, going to paint one of the slides here. We did buy the three buildings owned by the food bank. Uh, the two larger ones uh, sitting at 3rd and 34th, and the little house behind the two-story building at 3308, I think it is. Um, and uh, so those are, are now owned. We are we closed escrow. We own the building. Uh, you'll see food bank personnel are still there. They do have a lease through the end of March. 
Uh, so they're still operating out of those buildings through, through the month of March, uh, just so you know. So what are we going to do with those buildings? So it's basically going to be, uh, we're going to go in internally. That's the good news, is you're not going to hear a lot of noise during the construction phase because it's all inside the building for the most part. But we're going to go in and keep it as much the same as we can and still operate. But we're going to have to do a fair amount of work um, to build out, particularly the one story, the old grocery store, uh, because that's where the medical clinic and dental clinic will be. And of course, we're going to actually have operatories in there. So there's a big build out in part of that building. Um, so I just mentioned the medical clinic. We are going to have a what we call a Pacific Healthcare Collaborative. Now exactly, I'm not a medical professional, so I'm already getting out of my wheelhouse here, but I will tell you the way I understand it. That we are going to have, you're going to be able to get your teeth taken care of in there. They're going to take Dentacal. And you know, you go in, you go in for your toothache, they throw a blood pressure cuff on your arm. My problem, I have hypertension. And they go, oh, your blood pressure's high. Let's get a physician assistant over here while you're here. Get your tooth fixed. Um, kind of what we call a cross collaborative clinic between medical and dental. We're trying this. We're the first university, as far as I know, Mike and Eric, I don't know if you've heard differently, in the United States to have a cross collaborative clinic like this. And so, who will be manning the clinic, right? Well, students will be in there. Um, but we also may have some professionals, some MDs in there potentially as well. We're still working through some of those details. But the other two things we're doing, which is actually going to take up most of the space in the two buildings, is we are expanding our physician assistant program. So those students will be manning the clinic. And we're expanding out of San Francisco. The PA program is in the Muddox building right now on Fifth Avenue, Fifth Street. Like the street or Fifth Avenue? Fifth Avenue. Fifth Avenue. And uh, they'll be moving out of there into the two story building. We're going to double the size from 45 per class to 90 per class. Be one of the largest PA programs in the United States. Um, and uh, putting in the Mud building some sort of nursing program. We already have an entry level Masters of Science in Nursing. Believe it or not, it's in our law library. Uh, because as you may know, McJones is much smaller than it used to be and there's library space, we made use of it. Uh, but we're also going to expand nursing in the MUDX probably, and I'm guessing nurse practitioner, but I'm not 100%, we're not 100% on that yet either. Who's the other group? Uh, the other group that we're going to expand into the one-story building where the clinic is going to be is our International Dental Studies Program. What is that? So I'm a dentist in India. I want to practice in the United States. I got to get a, I got to get a license for the United States. That's what the IDS program does. It's a two-year program for licensed dentists from their home country to get them licensed in the United States. They will be manning the clinic as well. So they're actually students, but also doctors, because uh, they're doctors in their own right in their home country. Uh, so those are the groups that will be manning the uh, the. Um, Clinic. Uh, and again, Medi-Cal, Dental as far as I know, all of that's going to be taken there at the clinic. That's what I've been told. I'm just parroting what I was told on that. How many people does this involve? We mentioned parking. Okay, we're going to have 250 additional students between the new nursing program in Muddix and those the two buildings. So 250 more students on campus. And probably hmm, 40 faculty and staff, somewhere in there. So we're going to be approaching 300 people uh, that are going to be new to the neighborhood, so to speak. Um, and uh, we have about, let's go to parking right away. Uh, we have about 100 parking spots right now that are empty during the day on average. We've acquired 100 spaces. Okay, you go, okay, that, that's 200, you got 300 people coming. Well, the 300, we will not get to that number until 2027. Okay, so we've got a few years, 
And if you may recall, those of you who have been here a while, McGeorge used to have 11 to 1,200 students on campus. We're at like 900 right now totally with the health school and with McGeorge. And um, so right now, we're actually lower at the moment. Uh, and so we will actually go above the old maximum. So good thing we had 100 extra spots. And we have got to be thinking farther ahead. And we're kind of considering now or where, where do we put those extra students by 2027. Um, uh, you know, and so that's something that we've got to, we've got to consider. You know, is it building a new parking lot somewhere? You know, uh, the environmental person isn't here. They, they don't like to hear that <laughs> because you cover grass and things like that. With the lot. But we may have to do something like that. So that's kind of where we are. Do you have a question on that issue you'd like to ask me? I'm not going to play out. But it was a good, good question. It's something that I've given a lot of thought to as well. Um, and, and if you want to share like, what page you're looking oh, at. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on page three. I'm on page three. Um, I'm probably getting ahead of myself. But are there any questions as of right now what I've talked about? And we can always go back. I mean, again, informal here. Um, page four, you get a little more detail that I've talked about on uh, the cross-collaborative clinic. Also, with the cross-collaborative clinic, Clinic. One of the things that may go out before those buildings are ready, and I'll talk about timeline too, is a mobile clinic. Uh, we're going <coughs> to potentially buy a pickup and a fifth wheel, right? Big fifth wheel. And actually have a mobile clinic that will go around, I don't know what around means yet, but will service the community um, in some fashion. And that would be a cool idea. I actually didn't know that for two or three weeks ago when the dean of the dental school, who's housed in San Francisco, told me that. So, you may see sooner rather than later a pickup of a fifth wheel sitting in the parking lot over there, and that's what that is. Um, timeline, page five. So, we own the building to close in January. Actually, I think we'll be able to the first one, right? <clears throat> we are going to the board next week. We have a board of regions, we call them, uh, like a company board of directors. And we are asking them to move into construction. It's a process we have to go through. A little bit of a rubber stamp because they approved the purchase of buildings, right? And so obviously they know what's going on and uh, don't expect any, any hiccups there. Work will probably begin, when I say work, demolition work, internal to the buildings in May. We're in the permitting phase right now. We'll get in there with the jackhammers and all the things you got to do to demo, whatever it is they're going to demo in there. Schematic design for the floor plans are basically done. We've been working on them for a year. They're basically already in place. Buildings, the two story we're going to try, I would say this, and I'm in front of our board, try to open the gate. Okay? That's a quick construction process. If we, can, if we can't meet that date, we're somewhere between January and April 2024 for the two-story building. The one-story building has to be opened by July of 24. That's the international dental students there at July to June year. So that's when their year will begin. That's when we will open up that first uh, single-story building for, and the clinic. Again, full enrollment by 2027. Why not that right away? There's high demand for these programs, but we are limited by what we call accrediting bodies. These are organizations, national usually in scope, that say you can only grow so fast. So, PA, Physician Assistant Program, we can only add 15 students a year. So we're going to add 45 total. So that's going to take us three years of, of building up to that 45 additional uh, students. And keep in mind, it's a two-year program, so it's 45. The next year, you get 90, right, in, in, the, in, the, in the program. But one of the things, kind of back to parking, our second-year PA students, they have clinical rotations. They're off going through there and working in doctor's offices and hospitals and all that. They aren't here most of that second year. Um, so that's the timeline of the project. Questions on that? Uh, page six, security. Of course, that's always a, a thing, right? Um, we all like to feel secure. 
And uh, our students are no exception to that, our faculty, staff, and they're all kind of going along with them. We're going to be in a new, kind of a new neighborhood, even though it's very close to our neighborhood. Uh, and they're going to be walking to the cafeteria at McGeorge, as you all know it. Um, and and uh, back and forth, we're actually going to have probably a classroom uh, on main campus, is what we call main campus now, that the PA students are going to have to go to, because we don't have enough space actually in these new buildings. We're a little short for classroom space. So, um, what about security and all of that? And we're going to have blue light phones in the parking lots. We're going to have cameras. As you know, we have a, um, a security force up there. They're not a licensed, uh, authorized police force as we have in Stockton in our campus there. But they do have a memorandum of understanding with the Sacramento Police. Uh, I don't think they have arrest powers. I, I remember I did not, but they, they can patrol and call things in. They will now be patrolling up around, obviously, the two new buildings as well. Okay? Questions on, on that? Yeah. It's, not, it's not a parking question, but I just wanted to skip ahead a little bit. And um, one of the things that one of the biggest challenges I think, not just in this neighborhood, but the surrounding community, is around housing. So supply, affordability, and gentrification mm -hmm. of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. So we think about 300 people coming in. Yep. Is there a plan for like housing or helping students get housed? Because I know it's already pretty constrained. It's a it's a good question. Um, I'll put it simple. With our graduate students, we generally say good luck with that. <laughs> okay. Just being honest. Now we have housing on campus, okay. uh, but it's full. It's already full, um, and we are looking at upgrading that. If some of it's past its useful life, uh, quite frankly, and we've got to do something with housing, and so we are going to be opening that discussion up soon um, uh, for up here. So it could be. There'll be some expansion, but I don't want to commit to that now. Okay. Too soon. Well, we'd but love to work in partnership with you on that. Yeah. How many houses do you already own in those parking Because you do have other individual we houses. We do. We have some along Fifth Street there Fifth um, and, and Avenue, sorry. And it's, um, I think, three or four along there. And then there's some kind of back down 34. So maybe, I'm going to say six to eight. I don't know exactly. Yeah. Somewhere in that neighborhood. I just want people to know that it already does exist. Yes. But, but those are all business offices. Got it. Okay, our housing is back by the bakery, most of it, back to the back. Okay, for the students. Um, I will say, page seven, you already know what's on page seven, you live here. Maybe you want to hear, or maybe you're right. I think for us, for the concerns that they have, we would like to know from your organization what is going to really be other than the most that. Yeah. So, so here's what I would suggest. It's obviously up to you to board in the community, but we, we have some issues here. You know, um, I don't know if there's a subgroup that we can get the university officials to know all the answers and, and have some conversations around what to do with that here for the larger group and have them want to We kind of mull that over. Instead of kind of coming in here as a chief of police, boy, oh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I've done a number of times, and I, I read a kind of a sidebar with him with some people, small group, so we can chew on those issues and kind of think through a little more thoughts. Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're going to shift to announcements, but before we do, let's give Ken and his brother.
The cool thing about it, if you're into construction, at this job fair, it's hands-on. So you can actually pick up power tools, you can pick up blow torches and make toolboxes. Want folks to come there and get their hands dirty so they know exactly what a day in the life is in construction. So brick laying, concrete, all kinds of cool stuff. Um, there's uh, also sheet metal where you can actually walk away, you can make pencil holders and work with all their tools, that kind of stuff. So it's going to be at the Star Center on March 17th, flyers in the back. And then also, two other quick programs. These are one from the city of Sacramento. So folks have been here before, heard, I think, maybe two meetings ago, Lynette Hall say that I will be a contact person for all these resources throughout the city. The city of Sacramento has all these resources a lot of folks don't know about. So they want to try to get the word out. So they picked me to be the loud now to be able to kind of give it all to you guys. But uh, I just got the tablet today. So what we're going to do is like, next month, I'll have a table. And folks can come up, we'll get your profile, find out what you need, and they get you the right kind of resources. So flyers right here. If you, my, my number's on here. Uh, until I get all the database set up, you can call me, and we can do it all over the phone and go from there. Last thing, on the bottom of this second program, totally unrelated to the city. This is the United Way. They partnered with my organization, Neighborhood Innovation, to give away a bunch of computers. So you guys heard me last time, last meeting. I was up front, I had a computer, and I said, hey, these are free. Who wants them? And everybody was very interested, right? Only one person contacted me. I got a bunch of them. They're ready to go, right? So I got the desktops, and today I got 10 laptops. Now, what's happening is United Way wants to break the digital divide, so there's a lot of folks that do not have computer access. So if you are low income, don't have any um, computer access, I can hook you up. And then also, you can get free Wi-Fi for one year. So these are programs that we have. You just have to follow through, make the connection with you. So again, on the back table, information on both of those. Any questions? Good? That's it right there. Yeah. Thank you. Who grows vegetables? Anybody here grow vegetables? What? You grow vegetables? You got grow them? Yeah. Not yet? No. Have you ever grown anything from a seed? Yeah. No. Would you like to? Yeah. Alright, that's the right answer. Every single Saturday at Find Out Farms with Parker and Howard, you can come get free seeds. Free seeds. You don't have to spend 350 on all those packets and get 20 tomato seeds and then grow three of them. Where is Howard? Up. Uh, it just go Stockton towards 44. Look for the big yellow sign. It says Find Out Farms, 9 a.m. to noon. Free seeds. Every Saturday. Free seeds. I know what farm you You got food? I've got free fruit most Saturdays. Okay. Do yeah. you have flowers or just, or just veggies and fruit? Uh, as far as seeds go, I do have some California native flower seeds. Oh, I know what flower I need to see you, but I don't know what how it is. You see me? Yeah. A couple other announcements. A couple other announcements here. Uh, so, uh, Habitat for Humanity, our nonprofit uh, here in Sacramento, they are doing a program called Rock the Block. Um, they've been doing Rock the Block for like five years in Oak Park, um, and it's basically it's going to be on May fifth and sixth. Actually, darn it, we should be giving this announcement. I'm giving your announcement. Great. No, 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 no. I thought you. I thought you would say go talk to a cat or something. Yeah. So, um, okay. So, Rock the Block is one, right? We're, that will be May 5th, May 6th. It's uh, home repairs from building fences, exterior paint, interior painting. Um, we're slowly moving into interior work. So you just pull out the application, put, it, put on the application what you're looking for. We'll schedule a time, we'll visit your home, and then assess your repair go from there. Um, second opportunity, um, there's three lots in Oak Park that will be for, that will have homes built on them by Habitat and the, the future homeowners. Um, in Oak Park, and the applications for those homes were, were opened yesterday, uh, March 1st. So visit our website if you want to be a first time home buyer, first time home buyer, or having owned a uh, business part of a mortgage in the last five years, you can um, apply to own and purchase a home with Habitat. Um, there's some few requirements uh, need for adequate shelter, 
um, the willingness to partner with Habitat, and of course the ability to pay. It is a formal mortgage, um, so it does. You will have to submit a lot of um, documentation. So if you're interested, visit our website, HabitatGreaterSAC.org, and both programs are up and running right now. And turnout for the repair program. So how many home repairs are you going to be doing in a park? So we're looking to do 25 home repairs um, and eight community projects um, for May 5th and May 6th. Um, we, we put a survey out with OPNA to garner the resident support and ideas on what kind of community projects that you have in mind. So I'm here. So if you have any ideas, you can come up to me and just let, let me know. Or you can work them out now. Um, and I'll tell you what you know. Sure. So is it like any kind of repairs, like bathroom repairs, like? So typically for, so we have two types of repairs. Good question, we have two types of repairs. So we're slowly moving, to answer your question, we're slowly moving in to interior repairs. And we're not sure what that looks like. Um, recently we've done um, flooring and we've done interior paint. Um, limited, LVP or limited flooring. Um, and that was a safety uh, repair. So we saw like there's older home with boards coming up, we can do that repair interior. So as far as like renovation type repairs, you no, know, if you have like a tub that might be rusted out, we can probably, you know, help to find one and then ultimately maybe subcontract it out to have it installed. So probably it just depends on I'm sorry? Like if you rent a home. Okay, good, good question. Um, so for our repair program, Rock the Block, um, it is only for owner-occupied homes. Um, so, yeah, so it's not for merchants, but we are partnering with SMUD, um, and they are offering to do um, a number of repairs that we can. So it could be window, window upgrade, um, HVAC, um, water heater repairs or replacement. So um, it, you can also you can come to us, and then we'll let you know what we can and can't do, and who we can partner with. Yeah. Some of those, some of those smut upgrades are, are like I don't know how many of you guys were surprised by your PG&E bill this winter. But <laughs> yeah, it was ridiculous, yeah. and so I, yeah, you know, PG&E they, they anyway. Um, <laughs> but but this, these, these, you know, you can get smut to help either give you a rebate or help install for free in this program. Save a ton of money. Um, is there a max amount for the repair? Um, no max amount. It just depends. We have. It just depends on what repair, what, what repair you're requesting. Um, so we have two types of repairs, and I was going to mention this. We have what are called critical repairs, then we have uh, brush with kindness repairs. Brush with kindness repairs do not have a repayment portion. They're, they're all free, and then we have critical repairs. Uh, critical, critical repairs have a 20% repayment portion. So for example, um, if you need a roof replaced on your home, they typically cost twenty to twenty-three thousand dollars. We, we wouldn't be able to do that for free, but you would pay this twenty thousand. You would only pay twenty percent of that back, no interest over sixty months. Um, so there's that, and so that's an example of a critical repair and a repayment portion. And then um, a brush and kindness would be exterior paint of your home, um, building a good neighbor fence, but eighty feet, a hundred feet. Um, two hundred forty-two feet. Two hundred forty-two feet, right? Um, Matthew knows. Um, Right, you, you were uh, you were one of the community projects. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So take take a look at the flyer. We have some out here. Um, there's some here in the back as well. Visit the site, and um, if you're un unsure, I just have just an application. And we have people that go through applications to determine who. Are the applications open now? Or yes, ma'am. Oh. They're open. So, uh, 25 repairs for critical and emergency. Yeah, come on. Oh, okay. And then there's eight or so community projects outside it. So a total of maybe 33 projects. 33, 35. Well, and there's also May 5th and 6th, you're going to be wanting hundreds of volunteers to go do some work. Right, right so yeah, so. In, thank you, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so because we have um, partnered with the city of Sacramento for this Rock the Block, they were so generous in giving us $1.5 million to use specifically in Oak Park. Um, we closed our sponsorship early, and uh, typically the sponsors, they come with like a team of 50 um, uh, corporate people. Um, so we closed that early because we have enough money, and this year we wanted to try to get 600 Oak Park residents out. Um, 
to come out and volunteer and, and build, you know, help your neighbor build a fence or paint your neighbor's house or, or whatever. So you can visit our website if you want to get involved and volunteer. It's just a simple one, two, three steps information. Then you get to pick what calendar you're building you want to be a part of. Any other questions for Darnell? Uh, Dimitri, is that a question? Uh, are you doing a party at FRCC out here? I'm sorry? Are you doing a party at FRCC out here? Uh, oh, yeah, no, so we'll, so we'll have, yeah, if you guys, yeah, if you want us to. But after, so May 5th, May 6th, we provide breakfast and, and lunch, so in our host site in St. Paul, we, we, kind of, we kind of turn up to St. Paul allows us to. <laughs> but yeah, for sure. Thank you, thank you. Here we go.
I think I've been on the board probably longer than anybody, and I remember one time we had like 11 board members, and it was cool because we had a lot of resources in the room. We could do a lot of things. We could coordinate. We had we had different committees working on all kinds of stuff around the neighborhood. Now we're down to like five, and it's just it, it's hard to manage. Uh, even pulling these meetings together, getting the food. Um, uh, decorations, the forms, all that kind of stuff, that's work in and of itself. But we want to get past that. We want to be able to do more. We used to have a flashy park group that would go out and just clean up the park and do all kinds of stuff there. But now we can't really get outside of this room too much because we just don't have that capacity. So if there's interest, let us know. Yes, sir. How many board members feels like the like, comfortable? 50. <laughs>